Good morning. <laughs> so I just got back from walking the dogs. Um, that's what I do for a living. I also have my own cleaning business, but <clears throat> more consistently I, I have uh, dog walking clients. So this morning wasn't so bad. Um, I have one client that has two dogs that are very, very well behaved boys. And, uh, one of them's probably around three and the other one's between five and six years old. They're not from the same litter, but they are, they are brothers. And, um, I gave them a longer walk this morning than I did yesterday. Cause yesterday it was like in the teens, um, which was so cold that my, it hurt. It was like a hurting cold. So, and I, I take care of, um, you know, how cold their little paws, their little pillows on their feet, you know, it's probably really sensitive. So we didn't go for a very long walk yesterday. So we went for a longer walk today cause it was a balmy 20 degrees. <laughs> But it felt a lot better, a lot better than it did yesterday. So we're going for a walk and my my right shoe kept going, you know, un, you know, getting untied, which it happens, you know. I don't, I could double knot it and just be smart and be like, hey, it won't untie, but whatever. <laughs> Laziness, I don't know. <laughs> So it came undone a second time. So I bent down to to tie my shoe. And I don't know if you're familiar with the habit of dogs, but as we're walking, it's more notable in the white snow where other dogs mark. So the dogs like to stick their nose in every single yellow <laughs> spot. You know, it's a thing. And then they like to remark it. So anyways, I'm, I'm kneeling down to tie my shoe. And Campbell, the younger one of the two, decided to stamp my forehead with his wet nose. <laughs> a stamp of approval. <laughs> so... <laughs> And when you know where his nose is bent, you're like, ah, oh, thank you so much. So when my shoe came untied a third time, I'm like, I right, forget. <laughs> like, as long as I don't trip on it, I don't really care. So that was my fun adventure today. So the topic I want to speak on today is sorcery. It's mentioned in many times in the Bible. And it's funny how people, because of movies and propaganda and predictive programming, people have this, you know, sorcery is, is they, they peg it in one hole and say it's, you know, magic wands and whatever. Um, it's in Galatians. It's on the list of things you should stay away from. Galatians 5.20. With a bunch of other things, idolatry and all, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, sorcery and pharmacia is a huge one. And for some, if you come into the truth much later, it's harder to let go certain things. That if you're on a bunch of prescription drugs, pharmacia, essentially that's uh, potions. So... Excuse me, my nose is itchy. It's interesting that if you hear about somebody who has a PhD, a doctorate in medicine, that in this world, in society, it's very respectable. That that person's very, you know, respected by their, their, you know, peers or their community. But essentially, they're sorcerers, basically, um, truth. And if you look, I don't like labels, but I'm just using them now to 
uh, make my point in this video. So if you say someone has a master's degree and a PhD and a doctorate in medicine, you know, that's respectable. But if you, the reality is they're a sorcerer who writes out potions, because that's what it is, pharmakia, they're writing out prescription drugs, they're giving you potions, you're turning to man, rather than the, his word says, put the Lord Jesus Christ first. So, I'd like to give you a small example. I have a family member who was diagnosed with MS, which is an autoimmune disorder. And um, they were they 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 were diagnosed. So the the problem with, you know, Oh, it's hard. I, I'm not a speaker, so please excuse me. So the problem is it's not just turning to the medicine field, the Western medicine field. It's not just a problem physically. It's a problem mentally as well. Because when you're told that you have something like MS, and the news devastates you because you go if you don't know anything about ms and you go on google or you you go on a search engine and you find out what ms is and how it it affects different people like the majority of people then it's like a mental and emotional attack on you in a spiritual way along with you know uh physical because your mental manifests into your physical so you know if you're diagnosed with ms and you own it you own it you own that you have it you think about it um, and they want you to think about it they want you each one of your red blood vessels has a memory it does it has a little brain it has a memory so if you're focused on being sick um, it's because it's in the spiritual it's all spiritual warfare it's spiritual manifesting in the physical so if you're focused and you're emotionally tied to the disease they assign you with on top of the fact that they give you potions, poison, to put into your body, <clears throat> the likelihood that it gets worse happens now to the person that I'm speaking about. It did. She spiraled down where uh, she can't go to the bathroom on her own. She's in a motorized chair. She's lost function most of the function in her upper limbs and she can't walk in her lower limbs as well now if and it's interesting because the person the example that i'm using um she believes in jesus christ she believes the bible is his word she believes um that jesus can heal yet um she's in the position that she's in because i'm not sure if it's because she looks at the bible as something that was then and not now even though um the lord god is the same yesterday today and forever i know part of it it's it is a mental restriction that if you don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, that you, of course you're not going to be healed. Interestingly enough, if she chose not to go and, and take the prescription drug, the, the potions, the poison, she may not 
be in a motorized chair and have problems with her upper and lower limbs and having problems with her um, urinary tract system where she can't go to the bathroom on her own because did MS cause all the symptoms and stuff that she's having or did the poisons and the the potions that she took on top of mentally and emotionally owning the disease is that what ha is that you know the result because I also know others who have MS as well that there I know a person I'm not sure if he's taking any medication but um he doesn't focus I didn't know he had MS until until uh I think a month or two of getting to know him I didn't know he had MS it's not something that he didn't identify himself with MS if that makes sense again he didn't he doesn't own it like it's a part of him so that's something to think about so again it's interesting how society you know you call somebody uh, a doctor in medicine and again people have high respect for individuals who have <laughs> really no no not like no real healing knowledge whatsoever it's like the Lord God is going to take the, the the wise things the worldly things and reveal how foolish it is and show people that what they thought was foolish is gonna confound the wise so it's it's interesting how you know cuz we're turned upside down and now he's turning things right side up so people can see his many <laughs> like his works <laughs> like, so yes if if you are on prescription drugs just know the truth about it know the truth that it is sorcery it is potions with poison in it most medications have toxic metals in it and if you think about it uh, I worked in a doctor's office I went to medical school years ago back in like 2005 I think it was about that time 2005 2006 and um, I worked at a doctor's office uh, Pennacook family physicians and um, a lot of the patients that were coming in were taking up to 20 different medications I'm not kidding you and half the medications they were taking were for the side effects of the first half of the medications so when do you take it when do you stop when do you when do you decide that they you know the Western medicine that they have no idea what they're doing when do you when do you make that decision that you know the Lord Jesus Christ says put him first that's also put him first in your physical medical well-being so again the the um, the scripture Hosea 4 6 my children perish due to the lack of knowledge perishing doesn't just mean death it could mean a slow death you're perishing slowly mentally you're perishing slowly emotionally you're perishing slowly physically because most medications they're not trying to kill you right away they're sustaining you where you're well enough to go to work but you're sick enough to focus on being sick and and 
uh, they're feeding, you know, the pits of hell feeds on your energy. It really does. You know, it's funny how I remember my ex-husband posing the question, well, why don't they just kill us all, you know, right off? Like, why don't they just do, you know, because he's like, he's he knows that they're poisoning us left and right. You know, he's in the truth a little bit. And he's like, why don't, why don't they just kill us all off, you know? And that's not the whole, they, well, one, they can't do anything without the Lord God's permission to do so. And the other thing is, you know, we're, we're like walking batteries, basically. Again, we're feeding the pit. So if somebody is walking around in dishonor and disobedience and they're not with the Lord Jesus Christ, their soul, their energy is is feeding the darkness is making the 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 kingdom of of satan very strong versus the few of us who are walking around you know hopefully in honor and hopefully in obedience and and speaking truth speaking truth is the best way to break down the kingdom of Satan is speaking truth it's not pretending to like people <laughs> it's not thinking you're a good person um, it's not you know what mainstream Christianity you know what they like you to think no it's speaking truth it's digging for truth it's not just coming into knowledge and wisdom and understanding it's sharing it spreading the light giving it to others that's why it's like when i see people monetizing their channels it's like it should be the lord god has given you a free gift to share with others freely you know but i'm i'm not judging you know whatever someone else is doing because look it's between you and the lord jesus christ it has nothing to do with me you know if you don't mind facing him you know <laughs> after the things that you have chosen to do in your walk that's fine um i have a healthy fear i'm like no <laughs> no 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 <laughs> i walk as straight as i can and be like, if something's questionable, I'm like, no, <laughs> I keep walking. So anyways, I hope that this video is informative that, you know, listen to no man, Isaiah 2.22 is, it's also the so-called professionals, they have worldly wisdom, which not is not necessarily in your best interest. So trust in the Lord Jesus Christ only, even with your health, even with your health. You know, I mean, if you get a bacterial infection and you need to take um, antibiotics, that's one thing. If you need to take an antibiotic for a couple days, you know, all right, you know, but, you know, again, it's like, how far are you going to allow people to control your life and tell you what's good for you versus trusting in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and putting your faith and trust in him alone, 100%. So I love you. I hope everyone's having a really good start of their week and God bless.